Before and during World War II, the Breton nationalist movements were generally associated with anti-French and the political right wing. The extent to which this led to collaboration with the Nazi occupiers of France during the war, together with their motivations, is a matter of historical controversy. Background Before the occupation, Breton nationalists were split between regionalism, federalism, and separatism. Essentially these factions, though divided, remained insensitive and frankly hostile to democratic ideals. Among these groups, only the openly separatist Breton National Party remained organized, dissolved in 1939, it was rapidly reconstituted in the autumn of 1940 and became the most active political party in Brittany under the occupation. Having broken in 1931 from regionalism, its founders Olia Maudrel and François de Beauvais were inspired by the Irish Revolution and played the nationalist card. When war broke out, the Breton National Party chose a position of strict neutrality. This party's ideas were anti-democratic and complacent towards xenophobia and antisemitism, influenced by German racism and close to all the varieties of European fascism. During the war the activism of the Breton National Party completely dominated the other branches of the Breton movement, who found themselves discredited. Collaboration with the Vichy regime On 15 December 1940 a «petition» signed by 46 Bretons requesting «administrative autonomy» in the confines of a united France was sent to Philippe Pétain. On the 22nd of January 1941, the Vichy government named Herve Budes de Gebriant president of the National Commission for Agricultural Cooperation. The daily journal La Bretagne was created by Jan Fowry on 21 March 1941. It took a regionalist point of view, opposed to the separatism of the Breton National Party. An appreciable number of Breton nationalists were also to be found in the Consultative Committee of Brittany, created on the 11th of October 1942 by Jean Quenet, Prefect of the Region of Brittany, an organization of study and work. According to Ivonig Gickel, it did not wield any executive or decisive powers against the wishes of the provincial parliament which conceived the adoption of the Breton regionalist doctrine. The will of its members including members of the Breton National Party Jan Fowry, Joseph Martre, etc. was to transform this consultative committee into a true legislative assembly to tackle regional problems. Many of its members were to resurface when CELIB was created. <laughs> <laughs> Collaboration with Germany German politics The work of Henry Frevel and Christian Hamon have opened up this field for research. Three different periods can be considered. Before 1939, Germany was trying to stop France and the United Kingdom from entering the war. During the Phony War, Germany planned to favour regionalist movements particularly those of Flanders and Brittany in order to undermine France. This was in revenge for the Treaty of Versailles, and to ensure that Germany remained the only continental power, with no threats on its western border. Some weapons were delivered but never used. By the end of June and early July, some Breton nationalists could take it for granted the independence of Brittany was well on the way when the Germans appointed a military governor in Brittany ruling over the five departements of ancient Brittany, but after the defeat of France a settlement was quickly made with the occupying power. The projects to undermine France were abandoned and the support for the nationalists disappeared in particular it was formally forbidden to proclaim a Breton state or to harm public order. Moreover, the formal annexation of Alsace-Lorraine was never proclaimed. After the conference of Montois nationalist movements were simply tolerated transport permits were given as well as authorization for purchases of gasoline that soon meant little in practice, and German support went no further than preventing the Vichy regime from suppressing the nationalist movements. <inaudible> <inaudible> ideology 
Bretons were not considered untermenschen subhuman by the Nazis, unlike the Jews and Gypsies for example. Maudrell, Lane and some other Celticists argued that the Bretons were a pure strain of the Celtic race, who had retained their «Nordic» qualities, a view consistent with Nazi Aryan master race ideology. Other nationalists, such as Perrault, adopted a more conservative Catholic stance consistent with long-standing Breton anti-radical ideologies that had emerged among the Royalist Catholic «whites» during the French Revolution. Topic. Strategic rationale A main intention of the German occupiers was to break French national unity. Its support for Breton nationalism needs to be seen in this wider context which included other aspects, for example the division of France into the occupied zone and the Vichy zone. But Breton nationalists very soon realized that Germany was in practice trying to keep its friends in the Vichy government content and therefore refusing to give any priority at all to the Breton nationalist demands. Nazi scholar Rudolf Schlichting toured the region and sent the following comment to his superiors, from a racial point of view there would be no objection to a Germanization of the Breton population. It is evident that we have no interest in promoting the Breton national consciousness, once the separation with France is accomplished. Not a penny should be spent on the promotion of the Breton language. The French language will however be replaced by German. In one generation Brittany will be a predominantly sick German country. This goal is definitely attainable through the schools, the authorities, the army and the press. Topic. Breton National Party Important members of the Breton National Party including Morvan Lebesque and Alan Husaf began collaborating with the Germans to one degree or another. The example of Ireland, or even the ideal of an independent Brittany, continued to be their reference points. Recent studies have shown the close links that Breton separatist leaders such Celestin Lane and Alan Luan had with German military intelligence the Abwehr, going back well before the war, to the 1920s. After the defeat of 1940, the Germans used these separatist agents in military operations or in repression against the resistance. A short-lived breakaway faction of the Breton National Party, created in 1941, was the movement Ouvrier Social National Breton, Breton National Socialist Workers' Movement, led by Theophile Doucet. Topic: <inaudible> Brezona. <inaudible> At the end of 1940, Job Loyant along with Colondon, André Laget, and Yves favreul ronarc a former leader of the Breton National Party in Loire-Atlantique—developed the doctrine of the Brezona movement, supremacy of the Breton race, formation of a national community, and government by the elite. This movement was to have but a brief existence. To prevent a possible takeover of the BNP by this splinter group, Jan Goulet appeared at Nantes to pronounce the excommunication of the Brezona deviationists. With his revolver in plain sight on the hip of the black uniform he wore as chief of the youth organizations, he left no doubt as to his intentions. The Nantes PNB meeting, at which the Brezona movement had hoped to take control, took place without incident. <laughs> Bezin Perrault a number of Breton nationalists choose to join the Bezin Perrault organization, a German militia led by Celestin Lane and Alan Husaf. As many as 70 to 80 people joined its ranks at one point or another, with typically 30 to 66 at any one time depending on recruiting and defection. At the end of the war a handful of Breton militants decided to ask for German support in the face of the assassination of several leading figures of the Breton cultural movement, such as Abbey Perrault. Having originally been named Bezin Cadoodle, the 1943 assassination of the priest prompted Lane to give his name to the organization in December of that year. It had already been envisaged by German strategists that in the event of Allied invasion the Breton nationalists would form a rearguard, and that further nationalist troops could be parachuted into Brittany. In late 1943 sabotage dumps had been hidden for use by the militia. Topic: Stroladu Stauum. 
The Strolladu Stawam, also known as Bagadu Stawam, led by Jan Goulet and Alan Luan, was the armed wing of the Breton National Party. A handful of their members took part in a confrontation with the population of Landavisii, on August 7, 1943. Jan Goulet, their leader, forbade participation in Bezin Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Bezin Commando by April 1943, the Gestapo had created specific units to combat the French resistance. Formed at the end of April 1944 in Landino, the Landino Commando took part in these units. It was composed of 18 German soldiers and 10 French agents some of whom were Breton separatists as well as former resistance members. They fought against the Marquis rural French resistance units of Trigarantec, Rosnoen, and Plaumordian. Several resistance members were tortured, and the commando also summarily executed some prisoners. <laughs> <laughs> Actions by the resistance Several Breton nationalists were assassinated by the resistance in 1943. The best known was Abbey Perrault, killed on 12 December 1943 by Jean the Po, a member of the Communist resistance. Earlier, on 3 September, Jan Brickler had been shot in his office by three FTP members, and similarly Yves Kerhoas was killed by the resistance when leaving a fate in the village of Pluvenez. When American troops arrived in 1944, Communist Marquis members began their repressive actions. Jean Carolla Danio, the Breton historian who worked under the name Danio, was beaten to death along with her brother-in-law, Commander Le Minthia, the Tastevint brothers were castrated, and the Morba sisters and their brother were savagely murdered in Morbihan. The BNP, dissolved along with the French Communist Party in 1939, no longer legally existed. Its activists were hunted down and not distinguished from the Breton militants who wore the symbol of the Dukes of Brittany. Ermine trimmed berets. Many were deported to detention camps, notably at the Camp Marguerite in Rennes, where 150 nationalists were detained for alleged collaborationism. The Breton nationalists sought to defend the fact that their widespread image as an overtly fascist, even Nazi, movement had nothing to do with the actual political backgrounds of their activists, as varied as the Action Francaise Royalist, the French section of the Workers' International SFIO, Socialist, the Separatist Breton National Party PAB, or the French Communist Party. Moreover, Jan Goulet received financial and public backing from several communist militants at the time of the liberation. Other militants accused of collaboration demonstrated to the courts that they had protected Jewish families during the occupation Alan Eon Yan Goulet. The nationalist movement after the liberation of France After France was liberated, it was as collaborators, not as separatists, that the PNB members were punished, and even then it was by no means all those members that were affected. Only 15–16% of PNB members appeared in court, and few non-member sympathizers were prosecuted. Most leading members escaped in Ireland or Germany and were not judged. There was no mass repression as claimed in post-war separatist propaganda. However the post-war nationalist movements will tend to minimize the collaboration with Nazi Germany and will create the myth of the separatists' repression by the French government. Still today, some people are worried by the «collective amnesia» of the current Breton autonomist movement about World War II or by their attempts to rehabilitate the nationalist collaborationists. On the other hand, the standpoint of the Breton nationalists consider that the representation of the Breton nationalism during World War II in the media is a pretext to discredit the current aspirations of the autonomist movement, such as the recognition of linguistic rights. <laughs> <laughs> Involvement in the resistance Several leading Breton activists, regionalists, federalists and separatists, joined the resistance against the occupation. They had various motivations. Sao <laughs> <laughs> Braise 
As early as 1940 some joined Sao Brays, the Breton wing of the Free French. This included several members of the Union Regionaliste Breton, Breton Regionalist Union and the Arbrezoneg Er Skoll Association, founded before the war by Jan Fowery. M. de Cadenet, a member of the latter group, and some of his associates wrote a draft statute, presented to General Charles de Gaulle which would have given Brittany a number of political freedoms after the return of peace. According to Jan Fowery, this plan was close in spirit to the one that the Breton Consultative Committee wanted to submit in 1943 to Marshal Pétain. Neither of these two plans resulted in anything. <laughs> <laughs> Joining underground organizations Activists like Francis Gourville, Ewan Souffes Despre and Jean Le Maho had before the war been members of minority separatist or federalist movements such as the Parti Autonomiste Breton or the Ligue Federaliste de Bretagne. These organizations were always clearly anti-fascist and critical of the extreme right. This led their members directly into the underground resistance. Others joined the resistance as individuals and after the war restarted their involvement in Breton nationalism. The action of a few members of Bezin Perot has often concealed a very different reality, for example the members of Bagadou Stowham who founded the forces Bretons de l'Interieur Breton forces of the Interior, a Breton wing of de Gaulle's French forces of the Interior, and were deported to Buchenwald. <laughs> Liberty Group For other groups, such as the Liberty Group of Saint Nazaire, composed of young former members of Bagadou Stowham, pro British feeling was the determining factor in pushing them to ally themselves with the resistance. The Liberty Group, under the name of Bataillon de la Poche, Pocket Battalion, helped to liberate Saint Nazaire from a pocket of German holdouts in May 1945. Breton nationalists linked to the London-based leadership of the resistance The painter René Yves Creston, despite his involvement with Le Breton a Breton nationalist and anti-Semitic newspaper, was affiliated with the resistance network of the Musée de l'Homme. He was engaged in reconnaissance work for the British. It seems that in October 1940, he received via Jan Fowry a memo destined for London concerning Breton autonomy to be continued by the Comité Consultatif de Bretagne, with a short preface specifying the origins of the Breton question. In 1940, the overtly pro Nazi Olia Mordral covertly sent Hervle Holoko on a mission to England via the channels of the resistance in order to convince the leadership of the resistance of the Allied leanings of the Breton movement. This effort went no further because of Holoko's track record, and the reaction of the Nazi-allied PNB. Bibliography In chronological order, earliest first. English language Rees, Jack E. The Bretons Against France, Ethnic Minority Nationalism in Twentieth-Century Brittany. Chapel Hill, University of North Carolina Press Bittescombe, Perry 2001. The Last White Terror, The Marquis Blanc and Its Impact in Liberated France, 1944–1945. Leach, Daniel 2008. Bezin Perot, the Breton Nationalist Unit of the SS, 1943–5. Leach, Daniel 2009. Fugitive Ireland, European Minority Nationalists and Irish Political Asylum, 1937–2008. Dublin, Four Courts Press. Topic French language Le Mouvement Breton. Automatisme et Federalisme. Carré, ed. Armoricae, sans date 1937, by René Barbon La Bretagne Eckhartley. Essay pour serveur à l'histoire de Dix ans. 1938–1948. Nouvelles Editions Latines. 1962, by Jan Fowery. Complots pour une république bretonne. La Table Ronde. 
1967, by Ronan Collie and La Bretagne contre Paris. La Table Ronde. 1969 de Jean Bothoral Lane, Bretagne dans la guerre. Two volumes. France Empire. 1969, by Herve Le Boteuf Racisme et Culture de la Race, La Bretagne Riel. Celtia. Rennes. Ete 1970. Supplement à la Bretagne Real N degree 300, par pm, de Bovie de Kergelec. Braise ATAO. Alain Moreau. 1973. Olia Maudrel. Le Rive Fou des Soldats de Braise ATAO. Nature et Bretagne. 1975, by Ronan Kali and Histoire Resumé du Mouvement Breton. Nature et Bretagne. 1977, by Jan Fowery. Naus ni saviens que le Breton et il fallait par la Francais. Memoir d'une paysanne du Lyon. Bridge Hoare Bro. 1978, by Fanch Elegote. La Bretagne, Problemes du Regionalisme en France, Cornelson Velhagen and Clasing, Berlin 1979. La Bretagne sous le gouvernement de Vichy. Edition France Empire. 1982, by Herve Le Boteuf. Histoire du Mouvement Breton, Cyrus, 1982, by Michel Nicolas. Archives Secrets de Britannia, 1940–1944, Rennes, West France, 1985. De Henry Frevel Bridge, Europa. Histoire d'une aspiration. Edition Igen. 1994. Anne Gars. Les Nationalistes Bretons sous l'occupation, Le Relec Curhuen, and Here, 2001, by Christian Hamon. Lerman et la Croix Gami. Le Mouvement Breton et la Collaboration, ed. Mango, 2001, by Georges Cadieu. Les Usages Politiques de la Seconde Guerre Mondiale en Bretagne, Histoire, Memoir et Identite Regionale. Marc Berger. Archives Secrets de Bretagne 1940-1944 par Henry Frevel, Editions West France, 2004-1940A1941, Reapparition d'une Bretagne Provisoiement Incomplete, UN Provisoire Destin et Dura, Bulletin et Memoirs de la Société Archéologique et Historique de et Vilaine, Tome CXIV. 2010. By Etienne Magnan.